Welcome everyone. It's a brand new year. Uh, it's 2024 and with it comes a new season of the Happiness Minute. I'm your host Anna and I'm thrilled to embark on this new exciting journey with you. And can you believe it? We're officially entered season two and we have so much in store for you. Our guest for today in this first episode of season two is Elvira Ramos Balinang. And the episode is called Empowered Living, Personal Growth and Professional Mastery. I'm Anna, and we're back on Season 2, Episode 1 of the Happiness Minute. So today, our guest is Elvira Ramos Balinang, um, and she's an author of multiple books. Uh, specifically, two books that we'll be discussing today is Life Curriculum Plus 12 Life Competencies, and also the book called Five Guidelines to Personal Mastery. So um, she is also a coach where she helps individuals and organizations um, doing organizational development. She also does seminars on effective supervision, effective followership, effective business writing, and teaching the poor to succeed. So look throughout our conversation for today, we'll be delving into multi multiple themes, specifically in about life and also personal mastery. So thank you so much for joining us today, Tita LV. Before we dive into our conversation, could you take a moment to introduce yourself to our listeners and share a bit share a bit about what you do? Okay, thanks for having me, Anna. Uh, uh, it's a privilege to be uh, a guest in your podcast. Actually, uh, I'm a training and OD uh, person. I do, uh, in the aspect of training, I do personality development, uh, management and human relations. Uh, I also do a lot of curriculum designing. I've uh, developed curriculum for uh, non-supervisors, rank and file supervisors, managers. I uh, also have uh, actually written a book for corporate social responsibility. It's called Teach the Poor to Succeed. So I have uh, it's a full descriptive. It has a full descriptive instructor's guide. It has a manual for the participants too. And uh, yeah, so basically I. Uh, I do training consultancy and uh, I, I promote the books for, you know, for a mission. Okay. So, how, how, Tita Elvi, how many books did you write now? Because I remember there's like multiple. I know like the two books that we'll be discussing today, but I know you also have written some books. Yes. Uh, actually, the first one I've written is called Teach the Poor to Succeed. Oh, that's a very interesting book. Yes. Very, very interesting. And so, this is based on... Uh, this is based on a formal study that I did in my master in my master's degree. So it's based on formal research, and uh, it has a tested guide. I mean, tested script uh, that the NGOs, the government uh, can use. Uh, and then for the participants, I have something uh, that's local. Tagumpay sa isip at tagawa in English. It's uh, success in thought and in deed. So those were the two books that I've uh, uh, written, started with, yeah. And the, the third one is, as you mentioned, is uh, Life Curriculum Plus Real Life Competencies. And the fourth one is it's at its uh, final editing stage, it's Five Guidelines for Personal Master. Yes. Cool. So, David Alvin, why do you do what you do? And why do you think it's quite important that we understand um, about these things that you've written yes. about. After the training consultancy is, or was my goal. It's it's still uh, I'm still doing a uh, part time uh, training consultancy, but having written four books, Anna, is part of my mission. I think it's uh, worth noting that when I was 35 years old, <laughs> that was three decades ago, I actually asked God what He wanted me to do. And so uh, he wanted me to, to write these things and, uh, and promote them. Uh, so 
So I think these are all out of inspired writing. Yes. So I always say, this is, having written four books is not my goal. It's part of my mission. And why is that important? Well, because as Plato said, as Plato said, the noblest of all studies is the study of how a man should be and how he should live. And this is one framework. Okay, and uh, we always hear the words or expressions, uh, purpose-driven life, yes, or mindfulness, get a life, not a living. Now, these last two books will exactly tell you how, the listeners, how to do it. So it has so a step-by-step, -step, sort of a step-by-step -step guide in how to yeah, yeah. go about it. Okay. Concrete okay. guide. So when you've written about these books, who did you have in mind? Um, because I think there's two books. Is it like ordinary people or everyone or is it just specific? Um, okay. You know, a specific uh, set of people. Uh-huh. Uh, the life for curriculum plus 12 life competencies is actually for the college students and young professionals. And the uh, five guidelines to personal mastery is for young professionals to more senior people Actually, anybody, uh -huh. practically anybody who wants to maximize his or her life. I see. So I understand, like, uh, for the life curriculum and 12 life competencies, like you said, it's for grad, you know, people who are just graduating from university and that sort of thing or starting their own professional life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, what lessons can they get from, from this book? Just a brief description of the lessons okay. that they can um, like a takeaway yes so generally it will help prepare uh, the young to be uh, to deal with life to navigate life better given its ups and downs now they have to know they will know through this book what they have to know what they need what skills they need to develop or enhance what personal attributes they have to imbibe or possess uh, to be able to make it through life, to be able to manage life and life situations generally well. So it's uh, the, the book serves as a concrete guide. It provides additional life tools. It offers practical tips to manage life better on their own. Uh, Tita, you, you mentioned just now life tools. Uh, what, do you, what does that mean? Um, what are you referring to? Okay, actually the life tools I'm referring to here are life, the suggested life curriculum and the 12 life competencies. Okay. Well, as in any, if I may uh, explain. Uh, if yeah. I, uh, yeah, the life curriculum as in any college course is composed of uh, foundation subjects or prerequisite subjects. And then it has core subjects and it has um, elective subjects followed by Practicum is the whole life, actually. Yes. yes. Now, the, the course, uh, the prerequisite subjects are focused on uh, what gen what people generally ignore. The, the quality of thought, the quality of your words, the quality of your actions and reactions, and your habits. Okay? So they are actually anchored on the five watches. You, you, you recall the five watches by Frank Outlaw? Uh, watch your word or watch your thoughts they become words watch your words they become actions watch your actions they become uh, uh, habits watch your habits they become character watch your character becomes your destiny so we are focused on those uh, because what is the importance of that why is it the part of the foundation because if you have positive patterns on this you will gain favor in life because that's human nature if you have negative patterns on any of this, you will lose favor. So that's that's the importance. Yeah, I, I always remember like for, for us, because I do business as well. So like they always say that people buy from people. So if you are quite negative, they won't buy from you or they won't go with you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they won't you know, understand you and it could it's gonna be quite difficult to actually um yeah. go on in terms of the business and stuff. And so, if yeah. I may inject yeah. something related to that, uh, Anna, we always say, many people always say, be yourself. 
Now, the advice, be yourself, may be positive or negative, depending yes. on the context. Correct. Because if, uh, what is a positive context? Be yourself in the sense that uh, you be with the people that you like. Yes, that's all right. That's fine. Uh, do the things that interest you. That's very fine. But what makes be yourself as an advice negative? If any of your patterns is negative, then like negative thought pattern, negative speech pattern, etc., then to be yourself is not good advice because it, it reflects the quality of your current self. So do you think um then do you think that being authentic as well is quite good, but it can also be like a double edged sword? So if yeah, you that's it exactly, exactly. Uh if you are uh, you know negative if you're when you say authentic, if you if being authentic is uh being uh, I mean having a negative uh, speech pattern, like you always say part of your vocabulary is stupid, dumb. Am I good enough? Uh, what am I doing? No. Where's your common sense? A uh, lot of sarcastic and uh, insulting remarks. But that's not. I mean, that's not good authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, thank you for that, Tita. Um, so I, I was wondering. So, can you tell me more about what a competency is? Because you mentioned it a few times, um, mm -hmm. and what are the recommended twelve competencies to manage life better? Okay. Yeah, actually, I've been involved in a lot of uh, projects. Uh, we call them competency-based job description projects. And competency does not only refer to skill. You know? uh, it refers to knowledge, skills, and personal attributes required to perform a given job. So there are three, knowledge, skills, and personal attributes. These are personal characteristics that are required to perform a given job. And so while life is not a job, you, have, you need certain competencies to manage mm. life for you, manage yourself better. Yeah. So what are the 12 life competencies? We have three knowledge competencies, we have three skills, and six personal attributes. Okay. If I may just, if you will allow me to use uh, <laughs> my notes here because they are 12. Uh, okay. Let me just, okay. So the 12 life competencies, as I said, there are three knowledge competencies. You have self-knowledge, you have knowledge on timeless principles, and knowledge on healthy perspective on problems. You have to know yourself better, right? Uh, uh, Sophie just mentioned that there are three things that are difficult to achieve or that are really, uh, you know, very hard. And that's skill, diamond, and knowing oneself. Yeah. So <laughs> one of the it's one of the knowledge competencies, and then for skills we have planning and organizing, we have uh, problem solving and decision making, and dealing with others. Okay, and for the six personal attributes or characteristics that you need to have to deal with life uh, uh, more effectively, you have possessing calm and positive uh, disposition. Okay, you, you should have perseverance. Resilience or stress tolerance. You must have self-directedness, teachability, and valuing vicarious experiences. Now, in the book, all of these competencies are well defined, very, uh, uh, very specific, and there are specific behavior indicators that will tell you you have you have the competency. When you demonstrate those behaviors, then you have the competency. Yes, those those are the twelve. So, Tita, you mentioned about the first one, which is the, the not the skills, but the knowledge. knowledge. Do you, yeah, do you get that from formal education, or there's also a practical element, a practical education element to it? Yeah, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, of course, there's benefit from formal schooling. Um, there's benefit from from formal schooling, but uh, the book aims to complement uh, is an additional tool for you to uh, to go through life. Uh, so there are practical insights here from life that you may get and then you apply in your actual uh, in, in your actual situations. So the, the answer is it's a combination. Combination. Uh, 
formal schooling, this book with the practical insights, practical tips, strategies. Uh, because you know, uh, I got this from, uh, feedback from those who have read it already. Uh, two persons like a senior a civil service commissioner uh, from our country, Philippines, and uh, I mean, not a commissioner, civil service director, and the principal from a uh, private school, they mentioned that it is a transformative book. And another uh, young professional mentioned that it is good preparation for professionals. And uh, there are other feedback that uh, it, they are quite low, so I, I cannot, I don't think I can okay. uh, no worries. Uh, yeah. them here. But uh, I will send to you the, the feedback, the specific feedback. Yeah, I'm also interested about the skills competency. Um, so again, like I know that with the skills, they always tell us that to be an expert, you need to perform 10,000 hours of work. Do you think mm -hmm. that the skills competencies that you mentioned here is all about that or it, it's actually like a gradual progression as well? Yeah, it's a combination of uh, just like any subject. It's a combination of theory and some practice. Uh, so it's not just about talking about it. It's just about talking about it. There's got to be some, uh, uh, you know, case studies. Or, uh, even in, in school, they can they can improve the curriculum by, curriculum by doing that. So uh, in practical life applications, okay. uh, you can, I know, you can practice. You don't have to have those number of hours, thousands of hours, no. Uh, you just have to be deliberate and systematic ah. in... Uh, Goal-oriented in, 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 in doing what yes. should be done. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So, Tita, so where can the viewers and listeners get the copy of the book? Because you are based in the Philippines. Are they avail available um, outside the Philippines as well, like Amazon? and Yeah, US actually, it's, av it's available only at Amazon. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. So, everyone can yes. buy it. <laughs> yes. That's good. <laughs> That's good to hear. And the the other book will be available, uh, uh, hopefully by the end of March, because it okay. is at its uh, final editing so, stage. Okay, so like you mentioned, the 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 other book, which is the Five Guidelines to Personal Mastery, it's going to be available in March. Um, end of March. So yes. end of March. So why did you write that book? Um. For you said you mentioned like young professionals or people who are in in their career already. So what's yes, your motivation in writing it? Yes, actually, uh, I want to help people maximize themselves and their lives. Really, I want them to make it in the work world without much regret. I want them to be more promotable. You know, I want them to achieve balance. Uh, I just want them to do their best in the one one time opportunity of living <laughs> that's it okay so yes, what so. will be um the main difference of this book from other self help books that's out there already yeah i was you know i thought about that too uh i think it, it, it's a lot uh first well i define first i define personal mastery using five guidelines and it took me more than 20 years to finalize my definition. <laughs> more than 20 years. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's a long time. Because I think, Anna, I think that my gift is designing learning modules. And so, uh, you know, uh, I when, when you determine your mission, you just have to link your talent or gift to the, your favorite sector. And my favorite sector is almost everybody. Uh, anyone I can reach. Yeah, because my mission is to uplift consciousness of people I can reach. And uh, specifically, it's to help people maximize themselves and their lives. So uh, what's personal mastery? What are the five guidelines? Uh, how different uh, is this book from other self-help books? First, I talk about uh, having a past, developing a self positive self-concept or a healthy self-image. Okay. And, uh, you know, we have different roles in life. You are a mother, you are a daughter, you are a sister or a brother, okay? Uh, you are a community member, etc. Now, 
when you look at yourself, you must with you must think of yourself as having these different goals. Now, it is possible that one is a very good career person, okay, a very good career person, but so you have a positive self image or self concept about yourself as a as a career person, but when it comes to let's say motherhood or fatherhood, you have a negative self image about your motherhood or fatherhood. You may be a very good friend, and yet your your self image as a son or a daughter is negative. So I want readers to analyze or reflect uh, their self concept in every role. And the goal is for you to improve your self-concept in every role. That's the first guideline. Okay. And I don't think uh, other books really discuss that. Uh, the second guideline is clarify your path. Okay. Know your path. How? Uh, by uh, being sensitive to your gifts, by knowing and uh, living your mission, by completing your have to be goals. Now other books will will maybe mention the uh, knowing and living your mission. But this one I want to emphasize here. You can have complete goals only if you answer these three questions completely. What do you want to have? What are your uh, what do you want to have? What do you want to be? What do you want to do? Now you cannot answer those three questions completely if your talents and your mission are not clear to you. Talent and mission are very important. They, are, they should be integrated into your goals for them to be complete. Now, in that book, I have a simple process, a simple input, well, an interesting process that will help you determine your mission. How do I do that? I just link your talent to your favorite sector or your favorite cost. And that's your mission. So example, your, if your gift is uh, making crafts and then your favorite sector is young cancer patients, then your mission may be to teach young cancer patients crafts. Okay. If your gift is writing and your favorite sector are children or, or children category, then maybe your mission is to write books for children. In my case, my I think my gift is uh, uh, designing learning modules. So my favorite sector at the beginning was poorest of the poor. So I wrote something for the poorest of the poor. As I've shown you, there's this book with the instructor's guide and there's a manual for the participants. Uh, yeah, those are the two examples. Uh, some people think that it's quite heavy, you know, no, but uh, you know, I, I, I make it easy in that book to link their talent to the their favorite cause. Uh, what's number three? It's uh, connect with others. So what's important there is you have to maintain the self-esteem of people. You have to learn to appreciate. You have to learn to recognize the positive in, the, in people, the positive in situations. Uh, what I want to emphasize here is do not use negative adjectives because it will make people defensive or your discussion will be unproductive and so you do not achieve your objective. So uh, I discourage people from using negative, object, uh, negative adjectives. What you can do, the worst thing you can do is to mention facts. So instead of saying you are irresponsible, you so you just say maybe uh, uh, you were supposed to do this. That was the agreement, but it didn't happen. See something like that. So those uh, are the, uh, the, the third thing, uh, the third, third guideline, and the number four is achieve balance. We always talk about balance, like between work and family. That's all. I mean, from my viewpoint. We always uh, read about those things. That's okay. That's fine. That's correct. But I talk to you about three balances, three types of balance. Balance within yourself. That's your mind, body, and spirit. Do something. Engage your mind, body, spirit in activities that will nurture them. And number two is between work and family. And number three is 
balance your focus between uh, between focus on comfortable earthly existence and your setting your mind on things above. Yes, we want to get rich quickly here <laughs> while we are on earth, but we have to keep in mind that our means do not contradict what is supposed to be acceptable above. You know what I mean? No? Yes. <laughs> so number five guideline is leave a legacy. So uh, it may not just be writing a book. It may be uh, being active in the ministry in your community or parish. It may be uh, helping a family. It may be just being a good example to your family. That's, that's a very great legacy. Or, or raising really good children. That will, because yes. yes. I think that's the most important one. I think, yes, is to we raise teach, good people. Uh, yes, feel good. They, they feel good about themselves, right? That, that they have a positive self concept because of you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, Tita, one of the things that you also mentioned is uh about like one of the the the, the mastery is having the right sort of balance. And I do believe as well, like you start with yourself first, because if you're not well, you don't think straight, then you can't do the rest. So you yes. need to start with yourself first. So yes. that's a, it's a good a good one. <laughs> yes. uh, that's, that contributes to your credibility. Like you have to live your mission so your children will know how to do it. Right? So I think. And I would just also like to mention that many people would like uh, to feel happy. Why not? That's a great uh, objective. Uh, but I would like to to change that happiness word to fulfillment because when you feel fulfilled, yes. there is joy inside. Yes. It's a now, different I, happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Now, well, I want to say this, uh, Anna. Where do you get that fulfillment? Actually, you get it from the number one, the extent to which you apply your talent, the extent to which you apply your gift, and number two, the extent to which you fulfill your mission, the degree to which you apply or live your mission. Those are the two uh, great sources of fulfillment. Okay, thank you, Tita. So any final word to our listeners and our viewers today? Yes, actually, I uh, I wrote some uh, uh, actionable strategy. Uh, how do they call it? Uh, actionable, actionable suggestions. Okay, uh, that are both anchored on the on the two books. I categorize them as basic and advanced. Okay, so for the basic, I would like to uh, uh, suggest that they ponder on on each of the suggestions maybe an hour before going to bed. Huh? and uh, turn the basic suggestions into habits. And according to one book I've read, it takes about 21 days to yes. <laughs> develop the habit. So they may, it may be worth trying for 21 days. All right. Now for the advanced actionable suggestions, I would suggest or I recommend that they do a, a half day or one day uh, you know, planning for themselves so they can address the five guidelines. Uh, all they have to do is decide and do it. Okay. So the planning, where, where, when do you suggest that they do it? Um, is it like every year, every quarter, every month, or you know, like start of the year, <laughs> like now? <laughs> yeah, like now. Uh, that's a great opportunity. Uh, maybe start of the year, and then uh, they review what they have uh, decided to do. Maybe by mid year. Okay, so if I may just uh, start with step number one for the basic. Because uh, you know the first book is a is a jumping board to personal mastery. The life curriculum is a jumping board. It bridges one to the to the next. It's uh, I call it a companion volume to the other. So I recommend that they read both if possible. So the step one for the basic is develop a positive thought pattern. Okay, and why why should they do that? Because Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher, said, the quality of your life depends on the quality of your thought. Okay? So how? By doing a mental diet. Ah. You heard of, men of the mental diet? No, I haven't heard about the mental diet yet. <laughs> okay. So do a mental diet. Avoid thinking of too much negative and waste thoughts. 
and instead think more of the positive and elevated thoughts. Like what? See the good in every person, see the good in situations, because in every negative situation, there is a positive possibility. Before you go to bed, have an attitude of gratitude, count your blessings, and then think of ways on how to uh, show kindness or compassion to others. Okay, now the step two, step two is develop a positive speech pattern. Review your vocabulary, identify words that are negative, because these words will be of no use to you, no advantage at all in your current state or future state. So as I said, like words like stupid, dumb, where's your common sense? Or do you have any better idea? <laughs> or any sarcastic or insulting remark? Yeah. You have to delete those words in your vocabulary. No advantage at all. Okay, the step number three is develop an action-reaction pattern. What I want the audience, your audience, to remember is for your every action, double-check your motive. Ah, yes. You be judged <laughs> by your motives. Yes. If the action is, if the motive is positive, then the action is positive. And then your reactions, manage your reactions. Don't be too emotional. You have to learn to disagree agreeably. Okay. And then the fourth, uh, the fourth one is after the financial or work life, as the action the suggestion is work reasonably hard. I mentioned that in the in the book. And what, what are the guidelines? In working reasonably hard, one, don't sacrifice health for any other advantage. Okay. Number two, too prolonged imbalance will cause you burnout. Yes, it's okay I agree. To expect, yeah, it's it's okay to have peaks in your workload. That's normal. It's acceptable. But if the workload is always peak, 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 then it will cause burnout. And then number three, you have to celebrate small successes. In between your peaks. Okay. And next, what sort of celebration do you recommend then? Is it like going out for a meal or something like that? Yeah, you can, uh, you know, uh, you can treat yourself to a massage. <laughs> you oh, can, nice. <laughs> uh, buy yourself a little something or celebrate with your friends uh, something that you can afford or with your workmates. You know, anything that will, uh, you know, make them feel good okay go to uh maybe go uh, what watch a movie <laughs> <laughs> okay so celebrate small successes between peak and then step number six is um, something spiritual uh do acts of kindness you buy you, you uh, uh, feed the hungry close the naked give because givers gain what you give to the world shall come back to you uh, in some form, uh, feed your mind with soul friendly inputs. You know, you have to watch, watch, uh, you have to watch what you what you allow your eyes to see, what you have to, you know, what you allow your ears to hear. You have to be very careful because they affect the spirit. It can lead you to do something good or bad. It depends on so, so that means that we should problem. also not be associated with a lot of negative people because I would say like that would affect your spiritual being as well, right? So if you if you are surrounded with negativity and negative people, it's quite difficult to be more spiritual. It takes a lot of strength of character. Unless you know that you can influence them, then you may be with one or two, but you know if you know that they will influence you, then you have to avoid uh, spending too much time with those kinds of people. Oh, but be, be with be a good influence, inspire others. Good influence, be, yeah. Yes, be a good influence, and then uh, of course communicate with our creator. And then step number seven is review your beliefs. Uh, what are your beliefs? What is the your basis in believing? You have to continue searching for your truth. In my case, as for me, because I'm a Bible believer, I always uh, base my truth, my sense of what's right and wrong on the Bible. As for me. Okay. And step eight, 
adopt a healthy perspective on problems because problems are not always negative. They are not totally disadvantageous. Actually, they uh, uh, improve your empathy. They make you grow. They strengthen your character. Uh, remember what uh, a certain author said, uh, the author of Tough Times, Never Last Tough People Do, I think it's Robert Schuller. He said uh -huh. that there is a positive possibility in every negative situation that problems will pass and problems uh, won't leave you the way they found you. So you become a stronger person. So those are the eight ones for the basic. But for the advanced, uh, I just have a few uh, notes here. For the advanced on personal mastery, well, I think I've mentioned the uh, develop positive self concept. You have to clarify your path. I've mentioned that. You have to uh, connect yourself with others better, connect with the organization better, because management people would like, you know, employees who are aligned with the goal of their organization to align yourself better with the organization, know their expectations and deliver, and then uh, uh, achieve the three types of balance. And number five is leave a legacy. So I, I mentioned too much. I'm sorry, I said too much. <laughs> oh, no, Tita, it's okay. It's very, very insightful. So thank you. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Thank you very, very much. The start of the year is nice to have you as our guest. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Anna. Thank you for having me too. Okay. Um. Again, um, Tita, thank you so much for taking time to join us on the Happiness Minute. It's been a pleasure hearing your insights and learning more about your experiences. So your ex expertise has truly added tremendous value to our conversation today. So before we wrap up, there, is there anything else you want to tell our listeners uh, where to buy the books again, uh, especially mm -hmm. the new book? Would it be in Amazon? <laughs> Please uh, avail of the, the two books at Amazon. Uh, Life Curriculum Plus Build Life Competencies is now available at Amazon by uh, end of March, hopefully the five guidelines to personal mastery, a road not to maximizing yourself and your life will also be available at Amazon. And they can also, uh, could you please post the link, um, Ms. Anna, uh, to my yes. website so they can yes, order I will do. The, also directly from me, uh, if also possible. Yeah, yeah we'll do that. They can okay. pre-order the five guidelines to personal mastery. Okay, thank you. Um, and to our listeners, thank you for joining us today. So if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to mention um, the Happiness Minute. Uh, subscribe, leave a review, and share the episode. We'll be back more with fascinating discussions in the next episode. So until the next time, take care and stay curious. Bye!